storm spirit all that type of drafting it was a bit refreshing to see whereas this is pretty telegraphed from nine pandas of what they want to do exactly here and yeah beast coast i mean they might just pick medusa again at some point <laughs> later on but maybe i'm just bored of seeing more first deuce every game that could, that could be a part of it but they're definitely going to take something that's good versus enigma at one point in the game here and they're going to choose to go for the rubik here very curious to see if they're going to play this on four or five the bat rider is that going to be a support will they move it to the core role i know stinger really liked his enchantress at one point which could mm -hmm. be really good versus enigma in the laning stage but do you want to prioritize the early laning stage or do you want to prioritize the late game? I think for Beast Coast, it's pretty clear. They'd rather be comfortable in late game situations instead of just trying to snowball the early game. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of either opener, to be honest. Like on the side of non pandas, I feel like opening two cores like this isn't necessary. And at the same time, Beast Coast, I think they're choosing to open with the two supports. And uh, it's kind of like a weak, uh, weak opener from the first pick since you kind of get countered anyways. And. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, not they sure. aren't exactly the heroes that can pressure Morphling either. They, they don't really have this strong burst or, you know, like, just constant damage. I mean, yeah, you can argue bad as one, but it's just when Morphling is out, he's going to buy a lot of this spell. He might have BKB. It's just these two heroes doesn't seem like they have any answers for Morphling at all. And Morphling is already shown in the first place, but they are not dealing with it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like they just got bored of Dusa, which uh, I think isn't really a good thing here because the Dusa was uh, on eight, was an amazing pick against uh, Morphan and the, the Enigma. Enigma had a hard time playing against Dusa in, in the game, and on lane as well. It's pretty annoying since you can just like kill the idols all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I think they still need to ban the Undying on the Beast Coast, and if they don't do it, uh, they're gonna have once again the huge troubles from the top lane. You know. Morph is going to be super secured on top of the, with them dying. Yeah, and it can be quite fast tempo for Nine Pandas if they decide to, you know, like if they win the Undying lane and then the Undying can go to the Nemas lane and the last game is going to happen again. They just win two silence and it's impossible for Beast Coast to come back from that. Mm -hmm. I think Beast Coast might want to consider just from last game how good, old, yeah, granting the sky, as I was going to say, just <laughs> ban on Terrace's hero, ban the storm. Those two heroes proved to be big reasons why Nine Pandas won that game number two there. So now Nine Pandas have to show something new that they can win with. They showed their storm sky was really good. Let's see what else they got. Beast Coast is asking here. Well, I will say that Enchantress is still in the pool, as is uh, the Techies, which Antares is also very good on, both of them. Yep. I was thinking uh, Ember Techies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Techies is amazing here at this game. On top of Undying, I think this is going to be like their opener in the next phase for Nine Pandas. And um, I wonder what Beast Coast is going to prepare for this. Do you think they will pick the Lash again? <laughs> I don't think it's a particularly good Lash game, but they don't seem to care about whether it's good or not. <laughs> they just pick it anyway. <laughs> they need uh, they need some melee dudes to enable their supports, mm -hmm. since like uh, they're kind of like more of a backline. But once again, the, you, do you really want to pick Mars into the morph and give him such a free lane? Especially when there's like, for, for example, Undying might be coming as well your way. Mars is going to be sucked again, and uh, there's no really pressure on the morphing. There's the Undying. Dying is already there. If we're talking about not caring if it's a good game or not, I think maybe they will consider Kunkka. Because he is a big Darmago hero, and in a way it's not that bad, because you can't really lose your lane, and you can definitely help your silence. Kunkka is uh, an unusual hero for sure. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen him in years. We played in the group stage. They did? Yep. Yeah, Beast Coast did. I thought it was a Timber Saw game, right? I don't think they won, but they yeah. did play it. Because I remember having a big talk about... I mean, I, I personally generally just don't like seeing Kunkka this patch. It's very difficult to execute and win games with. But Snapfire, that is a hero that is picked oftentimes against the Undying. So it makes me wonder, is the possibility of this Batrider being a core, or is it going to be the Snapfire? They're both pretty flexible. I know Beast Coast, Dark Mago's, one of his specialty heroes is this Batrider from a while ago. He can play it. 
I'm sure Sacred can play it as well, but so far they've only played it mid and pos four. But yeah, I, I mean, it can be both. Let's see the next uh, hero they're gonna open. I mean, if they want to keep it open, they'll just pick a carry here, right? And then it was still no nothing. Should yeah. we pick the Medusa? And I think yeah. it's perfectly fine to pick your carry right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you see most likely your offlane matchup. You see a Morphling. You see your carry matchup. You don't really need to see that much more. And yeah. I think holding this flex could be that valuable to just... I mean, I feel like Duze is their best choice for sure in this slot because they already banned uh, PL, Naga, Ooh. and Meepo and Nine Pandas. All right, we got some cores now. Snapfire right. and Bat a core. Likely, oh, unless, uh, unless Elder Titan. Rubik mid or something. Unless Elder Titan Kaelid. versus yeah, Morph yeah. in lane, though. Elder Titan core has also been... It's been talked about, but I don't think we've seen it. Like ET Snap lane? ET Rubik lane. Or ET Betrider lane. Could be anything. Everything's so in the air here. <laughs> yeah, it feels like they have four supports right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, four, four supports to, to Jim Park have a good game. Potential last That's game plan. of the major. They want to, you know, pull out all the stops here. Show us everything they got. I don't know. I feel like the Nine Pandas just drafting their own thing. And the uh, Beast Ghosts are kind of like falling towards what Nine Pandas have and try to counter this. And well, that's just first pick, it's not a good, you know, strategy to be doing in my opinion but i think it's just because nine pandas just showed everything right away right you just pick your offlane enigma your carry morph and your first two picks on second pick so they kind of like like here here's what we're doing try to counter it type of situation and it what is very uh concerning i would say for beast coast is they had their comfort available if they wanted to pick the mars yeah but even though that was available they chose to forego it so yeah. that kind of makes you think that they might be experimenting or they lost faith in just picking Mars that early, which isn't a good sign because they've been very successful with it up until last game. For Nine Pandas, the team that were doing uh, Enigma position four in this tournament, or it wasn't them? Because uh, to me, it seems like this Enigma can still be flex and they can counter pick with another offlaner, but like whatever they see from the Biscos coming their way. I know Antares plays it. I'm not sure if he's done it this major. Mm. I think then, I can uh, check that out. Antares it. has played one Enigma game and he's lost. All right. I'm so thinking... he's done it. Sorry? Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> he's done it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking Slot looks really good on Beast Coast here and they can potentially be quite a few heroes uh, for Nine Pandas to pick on the offlane if it is a Slot on uh, Beast Coast side. Yeah, it looks like. Um... Beast Coast is convinced that we are looking for a Miero hero still on the side of Nine Pandas, depending on the Legion Commander and the Beastmaster. Uh, that would mean that Enigma is indeed position four, and Wind Ranger goes mid with the Morphin Undying on the safe lane. All we know is we just need a Jim Park hero for Beast Coast. Yep. Unless he's going to bless us with some carry Elder Titan versus <laughs> the Morphling, mm -hmm. which would be super pog, but yep. I don't think that will happen. Yeah, I think the ban is going to be Medusa and the pick is going to be some Lycan less pick for Nine Pandas. Some Lycan, you say? Well, we got the Shadow Fiend ban, so unfortunately, not going to see the Jim Park Shadow Fiend. Lycan. F in the chat. It would have been good, actually. This game. Give me that Shadow Fiend last game. Yeah. East Coast. I wonder if they're going to be kicking themselves for not picking that potential Shadow Fiend a bit earlier there. And nobody would have banned out Elder Titan. I mean, look at these sure. bands. Like, only one of these bands was not targeted towards Jim Park, and that was a silencer, so... The respect. <laughs> His pull is severely limited here. The respect is there, for sure. Well, PA is still in the pool. Yeah. Ooh. We, I think we, we like were that? talking about this earlier. We it's did it. talk about the PA, but mostly in combination with the Grimstroke. I think Axe is going to come their way, and it's going to be such a free Axe game. And nine pandas <laughs> gonna close this game super easy. Super easy. We have seen Axes do very well in lanes, but later on in the game, we've also seen it fall off hard. Yeah, not this game. If they can survive. So Bounty it. Hunter. All right, that's spicy. That's unusual. This is a spicy though. Let's see who's playing what. I'm very curious on the side has of the to be offline Bounty, right? No, uh, yeah, for I mean, oh, actually, no, Antares is gonna play Bounty Hunter oh, okay. and Miero the Enigma. 
Okay, I can Why is this good? This. I can kind of say this. So PA is like, she's having this blur and she can farm all the camps pretty efficiently, right? Even though not fast. But having this bounty hunter is just gonna destroy that security because he's good against Riki and all those Mueta slow heroes or Invi heroes and he's just gonna stalk them out, right? And PA is kind of similar and you don't want Viscous heroes to always be around PA. You want all four of them to be kind of like terrorizing nine palace uh, lying up. So this... Bounty Hunter is just going to follow this PA all the way and it's great because they have a Rain Ranger so this Rain Ranger can potentially be the assassin to this Phantom Assassin. Mm. I mean that is That's very cool. concerning because like when I look back and I think of PA most mid laners always want to play Wind Ranger against it and it's a very very good matchup but they don't care they picked it into it and then they picked the Bounty Hunter boss mm. for a little sus I don't know but yeah, well, I would prefer to too. have Axe there for sure on you, the you, side of Nine Pandas. I'm not a big fan of B Bounty Hunter. Okay. Not even on plus four. You would probably see the Enigma four. four and something else from Yarrow. Yeah, yeah, I would love to see the Axe there instead. But uh, you know, it's all on the Jim Park again. Like whether he can carry this game. Jim Park, can he carry Beast other round on the lower bracket, or will Nine Pandas continue their run here at the Bali Major? We're finding out as we're heading over to Odie Pixel and Gunner. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Yes, the deciding game now here between Beast Coast and Nine Pandas, and uh, some exciting ways to end both of these drafts. Jim Park bringing in a Jim Park special. The PA close this one up, and Nine Pandas, a hero that we don't see too much, Bounty Hunter. It's going to be the choice here for Antares. Gunner, what do you make of this? I think they, they banned all of Jim Park's heroes. He's getting kind of limited, and, you know, PA was still there. It's one of his heroes, so it was a little scary to pick his hero, I think, because you need to deal with the Enigma in the lane. And Nine Pan has made the choice that Enigma will be fine versus PA. And so they just need a melee support. And Bounty kind of fits that. I haven't really seen this hero that much, but at the start of the patch, it was destroying every single pump I played. He would just take the warp gate, he would kill the other lane, then you come back to your lane and kill your lane. So I think the biggest thing is probably how he moves, I think is the kind of deciding factor on this Bounty. The warp gates are still really strong kind of to rotate they nerf them slightly but if he's able to kind of break down the top lane by connecting to the undying connecting to the morph that could be the opening that nine pinners need to take this win Parker's also dropped two rapiers yeah in the chat Rank looking forward yeah i mean if we get there it'll be a whole lot of fun it'll be one of those games i mean both teams having their, their big old carries to, to gear up here ramses on his morph or on his pa could get pretty crazy. I mean, is there the potential, though, for one of these teams to, to be set up for, for a good start on the lanes and and, and perhaps snowball when you, you consider the lineups? I, I would honestly slightly favor Beast Coast. I think Sacred is really good in these ranged kind of damage dealers. He plays Weaver a lot. He plays Snap a lot. So I think probably Sacred's really comfortable in this kind of game. Dark Mago plays Bat Raider a lot. And, you know, Jim Park, anytime you play heroes that are off meta but you're very comfortable with, I always give you like a slight advantage because Mirror is not used to playing versus PA that much. And so it, it, Jim Park plays PA, so he's the one at the advantage in this matchup. I also think PA is, should be one of the better carries versus Morphling because she doesn't really care that much by losing her attack speed. She has it built in in her W and the blink strike, so she'll be able to do that. And also, it's really hard to turn into her. She's blurred at the, every single fight and she just jumps on your support, kills them, goes back to blur, and it's really hard to play around that for her. The morphling. Talk, talking about Darmog on this mid matchup on the, the bat against the Wind Ranger. Uh, how does this normally fare between these two heroes? It's a pretty even matchup. It can be kind of awkward in the like level six range because even if you try to chase her down, she can focus fire and run away, which is one of the best things you can do versus bat is run away and kill him. But the laning stage is pretty even. I would say no one should really have a big advantage. It's only going to be, you know, the, bat, the classic bat rider you take too many stickies you get kind of frustrated that you can't walk up to the lane and then you die and in the top lane it's another pretty stable lane it should be for for both sides honestly radiant has two nukers so they just both click their spells and shove the lane in all the time and the other side is morphling dirge which i want to say is probably the most picked combo of the tournament as of now you just kind of drop these heroes and they'll go even versus anything they lane Ravages. Should be set up for pretty good farm here with the backup solo. 
we'll see at bottom how much pressure Antares can put on to, to Jim Park on these early levels as this position for Bounty. They're going to be uh, likely that after that point where Jim Park finishes the landing stage, starts to hit the jungle. It'll be annoying that this is with this Bounty sneaking around and staying on top of him. And well, they're able to sort of uh, provide that assistance for Jim Park or at least find the areas that uh, Antares won't be able to, to just stay on top, sap the XP. To interrupt his farm. The biggest difference between Jim Park in this game as opposed to a lot of his other games, which being like TA, Medusa, even Meepo, is uh, hold that thought. Well, they're going to try and go for Mira hit. The stomp. Dagger in one. Uh, should have a good chance of taking him down. He's got the one charges. Oh, he's under the tower, but jump forward for Jim Park. They'll get first blood. He's going to take the tower hits, and Antares will make sure that he pays with his life. Yeah, he can chase out anything more. Won't be able to stinger too speedy. Uh, so first blood, but does cost Jim Park his life. So worth it's a lot of gold, this first blood. But uh, the scary thing is the difference is that PA needs an item to farm the jungle. She needs her battle fury to actually accelerate her farm. The Medusa, which we've seen, he got kicked out of his lane pretty early, but he's able to recover. He has split shot. His TA as well, he just recovered in the jungle. So this laning stage is really important for Beast Coast in this bot lane. If, if he gets off to a start, he gets Cornucopia, is able to sit here, exist for, you know, seven, eight minutes, that's that's where, that's his golden time. Once he gets the battle fury, everything's clear sailing from there. Yeah, I mean, uh, and nowadays as well, is, is there any flexibility with the builders at carry PA or you have to go battle fury route? There's not really. I think you you need to buy this battle fury, you need to farm. There's so much map now, it's, you know, 40% bigger as advertised. And so you just need to be able to push out these lanes and farm as fast as you can. Big hits coming in from Stinger and Taurus. A step back from that one. Lane. Uh, advantage for Kiyotaka. Plays laid really nicely. But again, it shouldn't be anything too crazy. Dark Mago will be fine. They'll just farm. And the nice thing is, both teams have the opportunity to rotate mid, but both of the cores kind of need the supports in their lane. Like, Enigma doesn't want to be left alone. Uh, there's a PA, and the PA also can't really be left alone. So this bot lane is kind of locked in until Solo rotates. Solo will head down, drop a decay onto the two of them, keeping Jim Park low. He's got a salve coming out in the courier. Jim Park should be able to stand. And they'll dead. punish it top indeed. The burst is there from Schofield and Sacred. They instantly get aggressive when they realize that Ramses was left on his own. That was really nice. He got the cookie on him, and he didn't get the strength morph off. So they just click all the nukes and he just dies. I mean, they're, they're really trying their best to dive down here. You know, they want to try and make something happen in response for losing their own carry top. But he has to cancel. Yeah, they, they, they won't get anything, anything here. Nine pandas. At least they'll push Beast Coast away from the tower. So they'll get some good pressure in with the creep wave. Hard for Jim Park to get across and benefit from this wave dying under his tier one. I mean, this feels really good for nine pandas. They're denying all this XP, all this gold. Jim Park is like trying to sap as much as he can in the tree line, but now he's even spotted. They yeah, know where he is. He's going to get any assistance. The tombstone's down. They're going to jump across to the neutral camp, but Solo's there waiting for him as they'll take Jim Park out. Nicely played. This is going to be at least kind of two or three waves being lost to this tier one tower. Also, the Elder Titan might get caught by a stun. Antares. He gets one more touch with the Janada. He has it. <laughs> I'm Pandas. They may lose Ramses on the top lane, but they definitely make sure that it's worth it with their presence down bottom. Two kills. They get the tier one tower pre six minutes. Really good. This is this is exactly what they needed. The PA can't really farm jungle. He's now stuck here with orb corrosion. Doesn't help his farm. No boots, no treads, and he's kind of stuck with a really slow game. They're gonna try and kite Dark Margo out of here. Key attacker dancing around him with the focus fire. He's gonna be able to finish off the kill. Nothing to be done there. Stinger cannot save Dark Margo from going down. Nine Pandas starting to get this early game lead. I like this skill build from the Windrunner as well. He maxes out the Windrun and. Kind of lets him just kite the bat. The bat can't do anything if you can't get on top of the other hero. And lane's going great for Night Pandas again. This team just winning the lane every single game. Get this really big advantage. And again, I would say this draft as well. The Windrunner actually has play potential. He's able to have a stun. He's going for this Atos build. we will be able to catch. And they already took this tower six minutes in the game bot. So all the cores of Nine Pandas are going to feel really good right now. Yeah, and no, would you sort of agree with what the panel was saying? They were saying, you know, this PA picked into a Wind Ranger. Wind Ranger having a good game. It could be quite the nightmare for a PA. Yeah, it's one of the better matchups because you have built an evasion, so the PA can't burst you, and you buy Maelstrom, so you already have a way to pierce the evasion. Top lane will be fine. Oh, oh they've got the dust. 
Gonna try for the TP out. Let's go, Field. He has got telekinesis at the ready. And Tyrus, he'll steal a bit more gold on the way out. But there's no escaping this. They'll take down the bounty. You didn't even get the wisdom rune, I believe, so. Yeah, nice try. But yeah, I think the, the wind matchup can get iffy if the P is ahead because there's the wind uh, doesn't really get that much agility or armor. So she'll have like this seven to eight armor for the majority of the game. And so once this P gets Deso online, it's really good. She just one shots the wind, even with just dagger through wind run. But if you don't get there, and they're getting freebies now. I mean, Mira and Solo, they, after taking down that tier one bottom, they swing around towards the mid. They catch Stinger on the way over. Key attack is going to start to get the wave pushed in. They're ready with the wraparound on the high ground. And Mira, of course, he's level six. He has got the threat at the black hole. I also really like the Dominator Mira's buying. It's going to up the tempo. They're going in onto Dark Margo again with another, another round of the focus fire. Kisses are coming in, but Dark Margo, he's taken out. As they dodge the kisses, I mean, Solo trying to do his best to dodge them. Sacred the Lotus should get him, surely. I mean, Solo is actually able to turn and get enough of a decay off. Solo's going to live. They don't get anything in return at Beast Coast as they've got to back away the stomp. We'll catch on to the two of them, but nine pandas. They have Key Attacker pushing in on a scope field. Double kill for Key Attacker. They're, well, the quickest, oh. the shortest black hole of his life there, Miro. It's all good, though. They still get a third kill. A black hole there just for flat. Yeah, he clicked the spell and the hero died. The goal was accomplished for Kiyotaka. Might get caught. Might get the lasso. He's sticking around a bit too long. Kiyotaka is away with a win run, but uh, gets the shackle shot. But indeed, he, he does get punished for that. Was not quite ready for Beast Coast to strike back after nine pandas. They win that initial engagement. Kiyotaka, he overstays his welcome mid. Yeah, a little greedy for him to kind of stick around for that long, but see this. See, uh, <laughs> the impact, impact move. move. Poor old Miro. Uh, he'll still be happy, though, with the way that they won the, the fight. Uh, I mean, what happened? They just sort of cancel it himself? You, there's like this just, fade time where you, you try to cancel the animation, but then you, you cancel you it miss like it. a little too late. Yeah. The cooldown is like so fast as to when you start the animation. Going on bot lane, Sacred's gonna get caught. Yeah, back to business here for Miro and Antares. They'll kill off the snap. Dark Margo and Schofield are here. And they've got Stinger as well. McKee Attack is wrapping in from the side. He's got the ATOS set up. Into the shackle shot. Focus fire on the Schofield. Pick up another. And so four now, 4k lead for nine pandas. Bullying Stinger back. He's got no fight to, to be had here. Losing his teammates. It's very difficult for Beast Coast to trade back. They've got to desperately just do what they can to take the attention away from Parker so that PA can somehow get this farm online, get this Battle Fury. Looks like he has the Battle Fury being delivered right now. So wait, he does not. It's the first component of Battle Fury being delivered. Yeah, got a way to go. Of course, whilst this is happening, Ramses is getting good amounts of space. Of course, Key Attacker, he's the one at the top. These kills that he's picking up. Ramses, comparison to, to Parker, he's going to be able to get the superior farm right now as the morph. It's a tough early game here for Beast Coast. Yeah, their heroes don't really have the best team fight as they have in like the first game specifically. They don't really have this Mars Arena to fight around. Sacred is going to go for a mech, try to buff up his teammates, but the Batrider, Dark Mago has been having a really rough game. This matchup mid didn't go the way I think they planned, and he's kind of in this tough situation where it's so hard to just walk into the Nine Pandas lineup. Uh, there would be a Tombstone drop, there would be Shackle shots, there's an Eight Toast, even though it's just a Black Hole threat, and so you can't really just enter the fight like you want to on a back court. Set up here on the mid. They're ready to dive close towards the Tier 2s. Atos into the Shackle shot. Schofield doesn't stand a chance. They're coming with the TPs. Can Beast Coast punish this Stinger? Trying to get the stomp up, but he gets interrupted by Antares. They'll get the lasso on a Key Attacker. Kiss is coming in as well. Stinger will fall. Key Attacker will die in return. Beast Coast, if find one, can they get anything more? Parker trying to turn the ball. So they have to jump away. Mirror stepping in. Malefice is there. They'll get the PA. Jim Park to fall. Three dead on Beast Coast. Antares and Solo ready to chase for more as they look towards Dark Margo. TPs are coming in. Decay from Solo. Dark Margo wants to get back in, but Ramses is here. Jones Hall with the adaptive strike as Dark Margo gets popped. Solo still alive here. They weren't able to quite punish the Undying. Send forward the Spirit. The Stomp set up onto Ramses, but they just don't have the firepower to chase this Morphling. Nice dive. It, it looked really bad. Every time Kiyotaka dies here, it feels really bad. Because he's just so farmed and having so much impact. So it's got to feel good for Beast Coast getting those kills, but just... Not able to get out and start bleeding more more and more kills. 8,000 gold advantage now, only 12 minutes in. 
Quite the lead indeed. And in the end, around this mid, somebody tries to step up. Sacred tries to get some sort of farm out of this one. The fall pretty low. The Hellbear Smasher will be taken out in time. And under the tier two, he'll survive. Get the sleep on to Miro. Gonna try and chase him, but the black holes are the ready. He stands his ground, does get put to a stop by the telekinesis. Let's go, Phil. Able to cancel it. Scatter blast over towards Miro. Three of them will not be able to continue to chase him. He's too tanky to take down. Dark Margo is trying to chase out these supports, but he ends up losing his life for it and getting nothing in return again. The supports on Beast Coast are both level five. Still, 12 minutes in the game. They, this is the, the, the hardest part about the game. It's not the gold, it's not the kills. It's the fact that your supports aren't even level six. If Rubik was had spell steal, maybe he gets the black hole, maybe he turns the fight, but instead he's just kind of a sitting duck. And I think it's on Beast Coast to try to get the game out of this mid lane. Key attacker, he's just getting catch after catch. Find Schofield around the mid. Uh, TPs are coming in. Maybe Schofield can live this time. Power shot comes flying through. Schofield's gonna tick down the urn, but the heels are there with the mech. Sacred turns with the kisses. Trying to see if he can burst through Mira. Mira getting low. He's attempting to run with the pig pop, but they'll get him. Sacred brings down Mira. East Coast finding something without losing anything themselves initially. Get Sacred. He will still end up dying as the focus fires back up. Key attacker gets back in. Takes out the snap. I think Beast Coast need to try to get out of the mid lane. They're, it's too easy for Nine Pandas to just have all this control. The tower's dead. They're just controlling both jungles. The Ancients are being farmed by Ramses. The four of them are playing on the right side of mid. And it just seems like Beast Coast is falling into this trap where, sure, they maybe get one kill, but they just keep falling farther and farther behind in gold. And Parker doesn't even have Battle Fury. He's still about a thousand gold away from it. So what's really the solution to this? Yeah, this Morphling Ramses, he's, he's going to hit some great timings. Manta's done 14 minutes in. He sticks around, is able to steal the Wisdom Rune. Level 12. Yeehaw! Parker, as you said, level 9 and a fair few thousand gold behind that of Ramses' farm at this stage. 14 minutes in. Maelstrom done now for Key Attacker. He's going to have it even easier of a time getting these quick kills when he gets the catches to lead in on the fights. I don't think Nine Panda should feel the need to kind of take their foot off the gas. Uh, they, they Obviously, they can because they're in such a strong lead, but it's so hard for Beast Coast to walk into them. If they just keep playing up together, maybe it's a Gleipnir they're waiting for, but I, I don't see a way for them to fight. And also, the Dominator 2, the Helm of the Overlord, is coming out for Miro really, really soon. And that's probably their go time. They're going to rush with it. They're going to take Tier 2s with it. Potentially even end the game. It's not going to be easy for, for Beast Coast to deal with that at all. Can't kill it off easily whatsoever with their heroes. Not yeah. until uh, kind of Parker's in a position to fight, but that's it. Yeah, normally you would hope your carry is able to be yeah. able to kill it, but when, when he doesn't even have battle for you, it's a really hard situation to ask him, especially to even show up to the part of the map where it's pushing. It's just so much farm that he would lose. It really just sort of seems those, those last few moments where just the rest of Beast Coast throwing their bodies in to, towards the fight in the mid just to do anything they can to take attention away from Parker, give the PA some sort of space down on the bottom, but did indeed end up feeding a lot of gold and XP towards nine pandas. Good news is Battle Fury is about to be finished after one more camp, and they'll be able to kind of eventually catch up. He probably needs another 10, 15 minutes of just farming to catch up to the game, but I don't know if Nine Pandas will give them that much time. Yeah, they're going to be able to play fast. As they're into the pit, this Roshan will be easily there. There's no contest to be coming out from, from Beast Coast around this. We'll see what Nine Pandas can go for with the Aegis push. Looks like it'll be Key Attacker to take it. Rams is continuing to just take up the space in the mid lane. There's, there's very little that they can jump him with. He's got his Manta done, also has the Shard. Even harder for them to catch and, and punish this morph, despite where Rams is heads out to farm on his own. Nice ward uh, on this warp gate, so they're able to see everyone from Nine Pandas, you know, across the map. And that also does mean that Kiyotaka is fairly alone outside of Ramsey, so maybe Beast Coast looks to jump him if he goes aggressive on this wave. But he should be safe. Maybe he's the one that's going to go on them. The attacker. Easing around with Dark Margo, won't the full commit there. Still 15 seconds until Focus fires back. Fight does kick off though. We see Ramses with his farming positions. He's ready to start farming close to the rest of the team. He's ready to join fights now. They're going to try to catch the Batrider. He's cutting the wave. He's going to TP. He'll be, he'll be fine. East Coast is getting. They're getting parts of the map. They're actually able to farm. They're pushing out these waves. Jim Park has been pushing out all bot for the past couple of minutes. So it's not completely hope is all lost for them. But. The attacker's going to see if he can find him. 
It's the opening with the Glide Knit. Focus fires there, so he'll try and jump over to the neutrals. He's got TP backup coming in. Jackal shot, Key Attacker tries to catch in through the neutral camp, but Jim Park's already a fair distance away. He'll be fine for now. So the TP's coming in, but you really don't want to try and tackle this Key Attacker win range. I mean, Key Attacker's got the Aegis. Schofield looks to be the one that's going to get left for dead here, as Miro and Key Attacker will take him out. And get back on grabbing the creep wave Good down way. bottom, getting another push going. The track sounds of Dark Marga. Ramsey zips in with a waveform. Another kill to be found. The gold lead just continues to grow here for nine pandas. So it's so hard, but you know, Jim Park lives. Best they can ask for. Anytime Parker lives, it's it's you know, it's not a loss. And it looks like he might be even going for an Ags. He has a blade of alacrity. He did, yeah, he picked this up despite having the, the BKB queued up. And uh, you know, still has the BKB queued up. Playing sacred, it's gonna be a free picking. Key attacker with this lead, he's just having such an easy time running around the map and uh, killing anybody who shows on their own. As indeed another one to be found for the win range on a killing spree, eight, two, and four. Nothing has been slowing down Key attacker's impact this game. It, it is an eggs that Jim Park is. All right. So do you like do you like sort of the call to, to, to go for this rather than for the BKB? Yeah, I think the BKB isn't really going to do enough. I think even the Desolator with the Elder Titan kind of reducing all the armor if possible would have been kind of a cool idea. But I, I can see the Ags um, as it lets him, if he gets one kill, he can maybe move on. It also sets up for a Divine Rapier. All right. He was, Ags rape. He was yeah. all chatting out he was. before the game. I mean, if there's some way he's able to pull this off and turn this game around, it, it, it's going to be very, very flashy, very impressive to see. Uh, this is a hard, hard game for Beast Coast. I think if he does get Ags and Rapier, this game, this game's all in his hands, but that is, you know, 7,000, 8,000 gold away. So it's a while away. We have some time. It's the pressure. It's, it's not slowing down from nine pandas. Miro getting the push going onto the tier two down bottom with Ramses and Solo. They'll put the fortification, Beast Coast. Uh, this tier two definitely going to be going down. Kiyotaka is trying to catch on Parker. You might just find him. As the focus fire's ready, they get the setup, the angle there for the shackle. He's caught Jim Park. Really big kill. Very few points of the map safe for Jim Park to farm right now. He was lucky to get away with as much space as he did in those previous moments, but tries his luck up on the top side of the map and key attacker. He's having none of it. I really like how nine pandas are moving on the map in all their games. They kind of have a ball of four and they switch out who the fifth guy is. Sometimes it's Ramsey's and he's farming the other side of the map. Here it's Kiyotaka and it is enables them to get a lot of gold and sometimes these pickoffs like right now and it's just it's really nice to see that they're not really scared of being aggressive when they're only three or four heroes together <laughs> now gem is going to be picked up by bounty close off the map even more take out all these wards and he just does expire in 40 so they probably aren't looking to end the game with the Aegis. usually it's always the second Aegis that you want to end the game on but it's starting to feel pretty sad right now for Beast Coast. He's been able to take these tier twos with the push of the helm of the Overlord. Beast Coast. Just, they're just going to have to let this pressure onto the, the, the towers come in, really. They still have to be so hesitant of showing heroes. We saw how Key Attacker has no fear of just committing in with the, the catch, the focus fire, and very little ways of, of Beast Coast stopping that sort of play from being successful time and time again. Yeah, Ramsey's has Ags. Uh, Kiyotaka's almost finished with his Ags. And I also kind of like how Miro's, this Dom, the Hum of the Overlord, is making it so he's not really playing around a black hole. So that means Rubik's not really have the opportunity to steal it either. So he's going for a blink. But I also feel like that's more just positioning, just to exist in the fight, maybe get a Malefice off. So it's been pretty interesting to see how Nine Pan has moved. And inside of Beast Coast, Parker has the Q up. He has Aghanim's queued into three rapiers. So. I mean, it's, it's the build that will turn it around if he can get there. He's he got to go for excited. something crazy. I think that is probably their best shot. I think that the, the items on the other heroes are just kind of... The Barrier has BKB Blink, but I feel like that's just a vessel for your PW damage. The Snapfire has just Mech Blink, and that's also just... If he's going to... Oh, almost died. Power shot nearly catches Sacred, yeah. We'll get the Tormentor, and they'll get out. It's a nice one here. Stinger to grab it. A, a cool one. We saw it used earlier in the um, PSG or Azure Ray, where the Elder Time was kind of just dodging ganks by stomping around. So, a pretty interesting shard. Um, 
Also, the cooldown kind of matters a lot to have just a really short cooldown on Echo Stomp for defending your base, which seems like Beast Coast is in that position. Bottling. Bottom lane. Dark Margo tries to push out. Shackle won't connect. Does have BKB and TP. Great power shot. He's able to play with the blink, though. Deep into the trees. They'll see him, and they've got him. Key attacker. Able to catch him with the shackle coming back available. It was a really, really nice power shot to just cancel the blink for that extra frame to almost let the bounty get it, but nice catch on the shackle at the very end. A little greedy because it's so hard. You don't want to pressure BKB in these situations because it feels so bad. And the game's already bad and you don't want to make it worse, so ends up going down. And Nine Pandas might look to go high ground. I think they will, yeah. Uh, they, they, they know that they're, they're, they're so strong and they have this, this lead right now. This sacred on the ward. They've got to try and get out of this top lane, East Coast. Hello. The tombstone. Sacred will be able to deal with it. And Parker, he got, you know, part one done. You know, Agonims is finished. Just has to get that gold for the rapier. See if they can prolong the game enough to allow Parker to get this. If if they win this one fight, you know, maybe he gets an Aegis with the two. Uh, PA with the rapier is one of the things that can kind of win, I would say, like any game, no matter the situation. So he has to always get it. The question is always, can you actually get this timing? And I would say, honestly, the way Nine Pandas is playing, I would not be surprised if he ends up buying this rapier. here. They, they, oh, absolutely, get, yeah. Yeah, I think I think he's There's gonna no play. Way. They're playing a little slow, right? They're playing yep. to confirm win the game. They're not doing anything crazy. They've been kind of avoiding the high ground. I think probably after this first game, they, it stung a little when they kept going high ground and dying. So maybe giving too much respect. And now Jim Park will finish his eggs. Yeah, Ramses has played super. Uninvolved. I mean, what, 21 kills for the team. He's only been involved in two of them, uh, but it's allowed him to get these solid timings. You know, insane amount of farm, 17k net worth on the Morphling. BKB is going to be on its way out. And this is pretty much the, the point where Ramses should be ready to join the team and look to push high ground himself. Bottom, another catch, another kill. Key attacker gets Dark Margo once again. But if they can find more with this smoke top solo and Antares on the hunt. Ramses is going to try for Stinger. Antara is in with the track, in with the stun. It's continuing to pick up these kills. Beast Coast, they're trying to cut their losses, but they won't get Schofield away either. Three dead on Beast Coast. Ramses ready with the high ground push. Parker is probably just telling his team, guys, I'm not going to TP back, defend with everything. I'll have a rapier and we'll win. I mean, it's, 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 uh, that's the only game plan they have right now. Black Hole is going to get a drop solo on a Sacred. As they take out the snap, the mid racks are exposed. Nine pandas, they'll get one set. You're talking TP's top, trying to find Parker. Parker can play his way out of this one. This is pretty scary. Is there any way he can avoid this? He's into the tree line. They don't have eyes on him. Parker will live. He'll get back to base. Now maybe there's a lasso. There's a blink on the bat, so maybe he gets some random catch on this mid lane. Maybe, maybe there's something. He's going to try and get the dinosaur. He's going to get healed up. They won't even let that fall there. Solo with the Pavis and the Soul Rip. Making sure that that gold doesn't go the way of Beast Coast. All right, Parker has moved on. He has purchased a Yasha. Oh, disappointment all there. around. It certainly is. Opts to just buy what little that he can with the money that he has. The Probably rip, feeling like the game on hold. might be ending before he can get that. So he's trying to buy as best he can. If they get the Windrunner here, this could be really big for them. Let's see if they can jump in. Straight away, everything thrown down onto Key Attacker. It's enough. They kill the Wim Ranger. Can they turn this into anything more? Ramses, he's going to go straight for Stinger. Stinger trying to get the stop up, but the adaptive strike there. Stinger's out. BKB from Dark Margo. They're on the retreat now. Trying to make sure that they don't lose too much in returns. Ramses, he'll close the gap onto Dark Margo. Dark Margo's going to have the blink up in a second. Not soon enough. Ramses puts the BKB, turns into the PA, jumps forward, kills him off. They get the Malefice on it was sacred as well. As Antares and Ramses swing across. Mira finishes off another. Three dead on Beast Coast. They might lose key attacker, but nine pandas, they're quick to avenge him. So much damage coming out from the Morphling. He turns into the PA, it gives him this... Blink Strike gives him a dagger. He's able to chase down the Bat Rider the entire fight. He can't kite him at all. And then it's just, it's so hard for Beast Coast to exist in these fights. And into the base they go. Schofield watching from the side. has got to be careful. Got the Stolen Wind Run to play around with. But the tier three falls. The top rack's open for nine pandas to continue the push. Miro tries with the jump. So again, Schofield being very slippery with the blink and the wind run. He'll get back to the fountain safely. He's actually able to steal the tombstone. 
Damage done on the top lane though. The melee rack's gone. And key attack at the same time. He's looking to take down Roche. This is going to be a free Roche. Parker comes back to the base now. He'll get this Come the Overlord bounty. It looks like he's just going to finish the Manta. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see him give up on the Manta and just go back to the Rapier. I think uh, they get that cute. Rapier dream back alive. Yeah. I think it's just uh, he's, he's spending up on the Manta. But now after this Manta, surely. Surely. Surely the only, the only the way is Rapier. Let's see. I'd put a Q's up. He just wouldn't bait us with you know, the Rapier emote in chat and not buying one. That would just be unfair to the viewers. Yeah, yeah, we've got to remember, indeed, he did commit to the all chat with the emoji at the start. See what he queues up next. As it is, though, Roshan goes the way of Nine Pandas, Aegis on Kia Taka. Antara's already looking to scout out some action. He's got eyes on Schofield, bottom lane, Kia Taka. He's found Dark Margo again. It's another dead bat. Antara's with the setup onto Schofield. He'll be able to do it solo. And Parker, he's going to try and jump Antares here. He, the he can't finish him off. And, and Kiyotaka, he'll be able to hold back Stinger with the shackle shot. Stinger, he'll go down. Parker, he's got to get out of this. See if he can. He's in the mid, solo. He's in on top of him. And Ramses, he's around as well. Parker keeping his distance. And in fact, nine pounders, they won't waste any time chasing him. So Parker, he'll be okay. His little illusion bait tries to fake him out. But Kiyotaka... He isn't really falling for the bait. He's literally walking directly at Parker. He's so close, but believe in the yourself. cover of the blur. Parker will be a little too evasive. Nice read by Parker not to farm that one camp. Cuts the trees. He's going to TP the base. Oh, he's got to get back. This bottom set of racks, this final set of racks is going to be going down soon. They'll start the defense here with the kisses from Sacred. They've got the full team back up. The range racks is gone. He's just got this final melee rex left. We'll see the jump from Dark Margo. He's in with the lasso onto Solo. They'll drag him back, but Solo. He's still good to go. He's able to heal up with the Sorrow up and the Decay. Sacred jumps forward, said to be sent for Parker, but Solo, he's back up to full HP. The Glide may catch it onto the two of them. Sacred goes down. Parker jumps back to safety. Sacred does have buyback available. The Rax, they're gone. As the Mega Creeps are out for Nine Pandas. They're onto the tier fours. They're going to have to do something soon here. Beast Coast, if they want to try and slow this down. Jump forward from Ramses with the BKB. Takes out Dark Margo. No buyback available for the bat. Parker, he'll step back, but Miro catches him in the black hole. The shackle shot as well, latching Parker over towards Stinger. Parker's out for a minute. No buyback on him. GG is called. Nine Pandas will take this series, knocking Beast Coast out two to one. Really impressive. The Nine Pandas seems their strongest point is uh, the lanes. They won the lanes all three games, and in the drafts where it seems like they can kind of extend this laning stage advantage into the kind of mid game, they just kind of crush. They run over Beast Coast. Both of these last two games looking very, very hot. I mean, yeah, coming into action as well with the Wind Ranger. Uh, here are the.